terms of the relationship of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? Or would you say that it's more of the book itself? Because I feel like you're more of a, like the theology of it. Like, where would your expertise be, do you think? Um, yeah, you know, that's an interesting way to phrase that. I, I don't know about expertise, but, uh, you know, the general uh, the general gambit. Have you heard mas- uh, Jack of all trades, master of none? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, the biggest thing, like, I, I'm not anti-philosophy, but a lot of times, you know, Christians or Muslims in, in deep apologetic territory, where they're like, well, you know, philosophically, is the Trinity, is it ontologically one or is it numerically one? Or is it, uh, you know, like whenever they get to like throwing out like huge words, and, like in deep philosoph- like philosophical lingo, I'm like, I, I just kind of sigh. And I'm like, this is not, if I could be good at this stuff, I don't think I would want to be. Um, because it, it, in my humble opinion, it defeats the gospel, which, you know, I, I would say if there was an expertise to be had, it would be the, the core gospel of what Jesus himself says you must actually believe. Because, right, okay. you know, like one of the one of the people compiling the Bible, St. Jerome, once said that modified. But he said, you know, the gospel is, is so simple. A child can understand it, but so deep theologians can drown in it. And every time like people talk about like these deep ph- uh, philosophy and they're like, this is so hard. How can people ex- understand this? How could you expect people to be able to understand this? Um, and the point is, you couldn't and you shouldn't. Uh, because, you know, the gospel essentially is. Look, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one the Bible is written about, uh, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth to give us an example of how to live, to fulfill all the law and all the prophets that we as humans cannot do. We are unable of doing that. He lived a perfect life through his death, burial, and resurrection. We can have eternal life. If you believe all of that and confess Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That is it. If you get struck by lightning... The second that happens, you are just as saved as someone that's got PhDs and theological seminaries um, under their belt. Um, more learning will not save you extra. Once you believe Jesus is Lord, confess that and ask him to save you, forgive you, make you born again and give you eternal life. That is all you ever need to know. So if there, you know, if I had to say expertise, I would say just that. that that's so simple. Uh, a five-year-old can understand it. And they're like, there's a God. He created stuff. His name is Jesus. I like that. I want to have eternal life. Great. Call in the name of Jesus. You will be saved. Um, right. Okay. Anyway, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Okay. So the, I, I know the exact type of like questions that I, I guess I'd ask. I, I kind of get drowned in like the philosophical jargon. So I won't ask those type of questions. So in terms of, uh, I have to go soon because I'm going to be, I'm driving to work, but in terms of, uh, Okay, what's your response to people saying, oh, like, the authors are unknown of the Bible? Like, what, what's the general saying there? Uh, well, there's there's a lot of authors. So I'd say, you know, which ones are we talking about? Because I think there's very good evidence, um, you know, for, for almost all the authors. Some, um, you know, you would say, like, uh, Luke, for example, it's a compilation. So does it even really matter at that point if Luke, the physician, was the one who compiled it? Because Luke uh, is just a compilation of right. a bunch of eyewitness accounts. So in that case, it's like, well, you know, there's some discrepancies on whether Luke the physician was the author or whether it was like directly dictated from Luke the physician to like an apprentice or someone under him who is who is uh, being dictated to. But regardless, it's a compilation anyway. Exactly. So like okay. they could have got they could have got a guy off the street to just read all these eyewitness testimonies and write it. So, you know, in that case, the authorship wouldn't even matter. But then things like uh, John, I think John is the one that I would, that would be my heel to die on, so to speak, because it's so pedantic. And I think you can really tell in a discussion, right? Like if someone brings up Luke, they would say that I would say what I said, and hopefully everyone can say, okay, sure. Seems fine. Uh, but ultimately the Holy spirit we believe is the author. So no matter which man pinned it, oh, okay. it's, it's totally inspired by God. But one more, one more scholastic bit. So the book of John, People will say, we don't know who uh, who wrote the book of John because it's not signed. This was written by the book of John. However, I think this is a great test to see if they're kind of intentionally being deceptive or um, what their motivation is. Because in the book of John, like the, the second to last verse says, all of these works were like attested for and written by the disciple who Jesus loved. So even though that sounds cryptic, 
if you will, if the person asking will just read the Bible, read the New Testament, you will immediately see in multiple books of the New Testament that John is described as the disciple Jesus loved. So whenever John signs it and says, this is the disciple Jesus loved, this is talking about John. So if someone still says, we don't know who wrote this, we don't know it's John, then I think that person's motivation becomes clear because we absolutely do know this was John. It's the disciple Jesus loved. Right. Anyway, and, and, for example. And, and also, like, irrespective of that, like, it's supported by the Holy Spirit in of itself. So it doesn't even, like, it's not, that's not even, so asking that question, it means that they don't even understand that. But then also he did sign it, the disciple that Jesus loved, right? So that's saying the author right there. Like. <laughs> yes. Okay. And yeah, I mean, you know, it, uh, I mean, we, we usually have, like, we just started this room a little while ago, um, and it usually goes for, gosh, it may go 10, uh, I think like, I think almost a day is our, is our record. But, you know, throughout the day, there's lots of different Christians of different uh, bents uh, who will come in. So, you know, some of them do like the deep philosophical questions. Um, so, yeah, I mean, no question is off limits. Like people, we want people to ask whatever they want to ask. Um, okay, no, I but yeah, that. so... That's really kind. I'm glad to meet you. Yeah, feel free to jump in whenever you want. Thanks, Nate. You know, that's what I really like about this room is like I have um, I, I don't do the philosophical debate. Like I mean, in all in all uh, honesty, I'm just not that smart, and I don't have that much uh, patience to try to wade through the menagerie of words. Um, so. I, the thing that I find amazing, though, is in Clubhouse, this room particularly, and a few others, like the conversations that I take away from here, I'm able to chew on them at later times and go back and reference. And and uh, there's been a lot of learning uh, on my part just from hanging out in here and listening to honest conversations. So I just hang out and listen, man, and it's a, it's a good place to be, but just avoid the toxic because there's a lot of that in the Christian rooms on this side. <laughs> Hey, Xbox, welcome. Hey, good morning. Morning, how is your day going? Uh, pretty good. Not bad, just stopped in and say hi and see what was going on. Awesome, well, welcome. Nate, I got a question for you. It might be uh, uh, drawn out, so if it is, stop me. Um, but the, the question I have is, as a Christian... You know, I, I read the word. I, I do my best to apply in my own life what it says. Um, but I find it. Oh, a lot of sparkles there. Who is oh, Xbox? Ah, oh, Xbox, you're killing us. I got to mute you, man. That was loud. Uh, yeah, go on. Xbox, Xbox has got that red ring. Um, no, the uh, the uh, I have a hard time like when I'm reading. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like I'll read the word and it, a lot of times it won't make sense to me and a lot of times that's that's due to just Asperger's and how I'm, I'm created um, but the thing that I'm noticing is like as I play out what the word says I see it I, I start to understand it what I read after I kind of apply things is there anything that you can do as a as a believer, uh, as a person who just reading comprehension may not be their, their forte, are there ways to read the Bible that help the literal translation, like, make sense? I have a hard time. Like, when I read, I mean, I've been a Christian for 20 years, and, and I just, I wish sometimes I got out of the Word what other people get out of it. Like, when I read it, I don't get the same impact. Now, like, two months later, I might see something happen or experience something and be like, oh, that's that verse. Um, but is there anything you can do in the, in the upfront to kind of help train your mind how to read in a way that you comprehend out of the gate, or is that just kind of a personal thing? Well, yeah, so theologically, I would say, you know, always pray that, you know, God and the Holy Spirit will illuminate these things as you read it and, and give you exactly what you need to get from it. Um, practically, I would think if you're, if you're just reading, um, you know, I would do something like go to BibleGateway.com. And you can read parallel versions of the Bible side by side. So, um, like, what version do you usually read? Usually the Holman Christian, HCSB. I'm not familiar with that, so I don't know how it reads. It's very but, similar. Uh, to, for example, very similar to ESV. Okay, so 
Um, I, I would do something practically. Uh, don't forget the praying part. I believe you know that matters and that ultimately matters. But uh, practically, I would do something like go to Bible Gateway and get something that's that's super literal, like the New American Standard Version, and put that translation on like one side, and then click the button to add a parallel, and you know add the translation you use, um, and then click again because you can have five parallel bi Bibles at once. So I would do like the NASB, which is like the most literal. Uh, the version you said you use, and then I would do another parallel with something that's very, very much the message of the Bible, the message of it, uh, which would be like, um, yeah, maybe like the message, uh, something that just totally gives the meaning to you. So um, I would do that. And then you can read your, your Bible uh, just right down the middle column. And whenever you get something that you're like, I don't understand that, or I think there's more to it. Well, you can go to the right and read the the more uh, meaning of it and what it's saying. And uh, I think that will help you a lot. Be like, oh, OK, I understand this better now. It's trying to say this. Um, and then if you want to be super accurate and litigious, you can read the one on the left, which would be like, for example, if Jesus says um, this is just an example, it's probably not a great example, but it, hopefully you can get something from it. So when Jesus talks about, you know, he's telling the parable of the shepherd and the sheep. And only the shepherd goes in, uh, you know, the shepherd lets the sheep in by the gate. He uses the gate and it's thieves and robbers and, and like predators that will try to come in like, you know, another way besides the gate in the sheep pen. So, for example, if um, the most literal translation or if your translation says something like, you know, there are there are poles around the sheep to guard them with with uh, to guard them with wooden stakes. And you're like what does that mean? Like wooden stakes and, and poles and sheep. And then you like go to the, to the more meaningful, like what the message is in something like the message. It may say, Jesus says there's a sheep pen. You're all sheep. You're in the pen. Use the gate. If you don't use the gate, you're not the shepherd. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think where I, where I have the issue is I don't, I, I want something that I'm not good at doing. Like I wish I could just read and extrapolate and have conversation off the, off the cuff, but I, it's something, you know, I mean, if I read anything and then try to, you know, extrapolate things from it in the immediate, it just doesn't come together. Um, but I, I want to try to do that with the word just so I can openly discuss things a little better. Um, everything I do is usually through analogy or through like life example. Um, so I will uh, do that, Nate. I appreciate it. Thanks. Do you think something like that would help or have you tried that or considered that before? It won't hurt. I mean, I've tried lots of things. Again, anytime you, you are uh, wired in a way where you have, you know, uh, I don't want to say a disability because like it, it doesn't hold me back. It actually helps me in a lot of areas. Um, I just the reading comprehension thing. It's it's kind of a hindrance. It doesn't mean I don't understand it. It just I don't have the ability to like extrapolate out of the gate. Uh, so I'm just trying to strengthen that in my own mind. And I, I mean I don't know how much biblical wisdom there would be here, but you know if um, I don't know the ha a hand of the body of Christ does what you say and wants to discuss things on the, on the spot. And, uh, you know, the arm is, is you, and that's someone that, you know, isn't necessarily great at that. Well, you know, if you're an arm, that arm may be better at thinking, thinking things through from every possible angle and, you know, writing a huge, like, uh, you know, a, a huge, um, article or something about it. That's going to like be super concise and explain things in an awesome way rather than shooting from the hip and having spur of the moment discussions um, where the hand, uh, if I don't know, the hand is one of these people that have quick discussions. It's like, gosh, all I could do is like shoot from the hip and just come up with quick thoughts, but nothing, nothing that's like substantial and nothing that like really analyzes from different ways. So I don't know if that's a, I mean, that wouldn't help what you're trying to do, but maybe that would be a different perspective. Like, uh, you know, some people can sit down and write like giant theological books. I can't even have a deep philosophical conversation without, my brain melting out of my ears. I hear you on that. Yeah, those those uh, lengthy conversations they they tend to shut me down pretty quick. I lose focus <laughs> at about at about six seconds in. So, and that could just be uh, just Bible, just, that could just yeah, be from getting, getting hit in the head too many times. Too. <laughs> Does Bible Gateway let you pick the um, type of Bible like the NIV or the 
what yeah what you're reading from. Well, yeah they've got so long. yeah they've got basically every translation you could ever want and they let you do a uh, parallel bibles which is awesome so uh, you know a, a lot of times i'll use that like remember uh google plus when we used to be able to screen share and i would bring up right. bible gateway a lot right. uh for people that said like you know all these translations of the bible are so confusing and they're so different and they don't make any sense well i like to use bible gateway to show them how even though there's all kinds of different translations which is just different ways of saying the exact same thing um i would just pull it up i'm like look don't take my word for it let's take the nasb which is the most literal let's take the message which is the most thought for thought let's take uh you know a couple others let's take king james let's take niv let's take new living translation and read them all together so i'm like just give me a random verse so they'd come up with a book and a verse and we just see all five versions uh compare right next to each other and they were saying the exact same thing so some may use different words like if you're talking about a wooden pole some may say wooden pole some may say wooden stake uh, mm -hmm. Some may say bundle of sticks. So the point is that even though there's different ways of saying the same thing, it's all the same message. But yes, Bible Gateway lets you do that. Right. And that's, yeah, that's, you can get the same narrative type of type of deal. I, I get that. I haven't read the Bible in forever, and I haven't pulled up that Bible Gateway in forever. Just because I haven't gotten into any conversations about the Bible in forever. <laughs> Time yeah. to change that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I do need to. Uh, I've been through so much. So I might as well. There's a, there's a video the, my friend sent me. It was uh, to explain like John 316. And it was like, uh, the video is called The Story of Love. Nate, I sent it to you. But it's, it's a really, really, really good video. It's 18 minutes. But it really felt like four minutes when you watch it. And it kind of explains and showcases like the father sacrificing his son. Uh, and it, it really like highlights like what that means through visuals. I thought it was really good. Like as a Muslim watching that, I thought it was really good. So I can only imagine like, you know, as a Christian. So it's funny that you say that you're Muslim because the next thing I was fixing to say just a minute ago was the, the Quran had caught my eye just, just within the last few days. I, I, I was thinking of reading a translate an English translation of it. Start there. Is it true that you would say that the English translation doesn't count? Or, or I, I guess, hang on, another question, most of I would, another way to say it would be, um, like, do you think, like, the, the Muslim consensus, if there is one, is the English translation, if that's all you have, is, is fine? Or to really understand the Quran, you have to read it in Arabic? So okay. I, when I like read it, Like lost in translation? Yeah. Okay, uh, when I do it, I do it in three things, three steps. So the first thing that I do is I go to uh, Quran.com, so Q-U-R-A-N.com. And sort of the, the Islamic narrative is that, you know how it's recited, it's kind of in a melody? That's supposed to be the, like, literally medicine for one's soul. So what I do is I play it, the exact verse, I play the sound because I need to make sure I can hear it. Even though I don't understand exactly what it's saying, just hearing it itself is like step one. Then I read the translation while I'm hearing it because it's supposed to be a soothing melody that speaks to one's soul, even if you don't understand the language. And then, uh, yeah, it, it should be mm. sufficient if you read the translation and the sound. But the thing is, though, uh, there needs there's something called tafsir. Tafsir it means like the meaning behind what is being said. So Quran.com is kind of like the Bible gateway of Muslims. It's super good. It's like it's so good it's like if there's a line that doesn't make sense you just click a button that's right beside it and it tells you what it means and then that's what i do but i make sure i have to hear the sound like i don't know it makes the biggest difference for me personally but maybe yeah, that's, that's, just what, bias. that's actually what caught me a couple of days ago as i heard someone reading it and it was the melody as they read it that that really really caught my attention where were you and that the, you heard someone reading it it was on tv oh it was on something i was streaming Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't leave my house hardly. So. I think it was Bones. There's a guy on it that reads the Quran or does his prayers. Someone in chat asks you, oh, Xbox, yes. were you about, maybe I meant where were you? Or were you about oh, yeah. when the interpretation argument was going about? 
No, I wasn't, Alex. So, Darren, are they at least uh, <laughs> feeding you for free? <laughs> they are, actually. Awesome. <laughs> Well, anyone got anything else? What a region or country are you in, Mojtaba? Uh, for me, I'm in Canada. So, Ontario? Ah. Yeah. You? Uh, United States. Oh, no way. I have such don't, a bad... Don't like, say it picture. too proudly there, Nate. Is that so upset? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking, because some people in, like, uh, you know, United States, or should I say USA, or should I say US, like, because usually I'll say one, and someone's like, what? And then I'll say the other one, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was I was just having, like, a, a brain, uh, you know, a brain in flux, where I'm like, wait, which one do I say? <laughs> I have this like image of U.S. citizens in my head of everyone just carrying around guns and like they'll shoot you at any moment. Like such a stereotype. I mean, I mean, that's not too far off. Did you see what happened? Two days in a row we had shootings. Oh yeah, the two days in a row. Yeah, one in Buffalo and one in Cali. What was the? Ca it seems like I heard about the Cali one. I guess I didn't realize it was the day before. I thought it was no, like a week it was ago. the day after. It was yesterday. Oh, oh no! Then I did not hear about that one. Where, uh, where was that one was, at? I think I forgot what what area. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what area it was. But yeah, it was in a church. It was a minority church. It was a. It seems like it's another white supremacist. Oh, is that where? I, I saw an article. Is that where the congregation like tied the guy up or tackled him and tied him up or something? What, did you read that yesterday? I, I, I saw it on like social media. I thought it was like a satire thing, but I mean, if yeah, that happened, then I, I guess I, I guess that was true. Beat up. But yeah, um, guess we could talk about that. So uh, yeah, I would say the first thing to you know, uh, imagining Americans just walking around with guns shooting everyone. <laughs> there, there's two ways to look at it, right? One is I guess the way his son brought up. The other is. Uh, was it, I don't know if it was a Texas motto a long time ago or just a motto in general, but, you know, an armed society is a polite society. And, you know, the meaning is if you think, if you just assume everyone you encounter has a gun, then typically people are a lot more reserved before getting in confrontations or altercations. And they're a lot more inclined to peacefully resolve things uh, because they're like, well, I'm armed. But so is, you know, these other 10 people. So, uh, you no, know, we've got to resolve issue. our differences civilly. The only there, issue And imagine right before 1986, machine guns were legal. Wow. I mean, you could buy oh one out straight over the counter. Wow. But, and but and there, wasn't, there wasn't violence like there is with them, like you would think. Yeah, well, there's an issue with Nate's theory. And uh, the issue is I, I have a gun personally because everybody has a gun, you know, just to protect myself. But... The issue is, the, you know, that's true if people are scared for their lives. But if somebody's suicidal and he wants to take out as much people as possible with him because he has issues, what makes you think another person ha having a gun is going to stop him from randomly shooting people? So, you know, that's a great point. And I would say, you know, as evidenced by, um, you know, I don't know about the mental state of the guy, but people that seem to be hellbent on just starting stuff. Um, that's that's the difference between one person that just wants to kill people as much as they can, then if no one has a gun and that guy, you know, is just going on a shooting spree, that's how we get 20 and 30 people shot and killed versus if that guy does that, uh, you know, in a place where basically everyone is armed, he may shoot or kill two or three people, um, mm -hmm. but he's not going to get many more than that. So at that point, you know, no one's able to 100% uh, prevent death, but you can 100% uh, eliminate yeah, or, well, how am I trying to say it? But you, you, can, you can basically video? curtail the number. Did you watch a video on Buffalo? The shooting uh, where he went to the supermarket, the one that's from two days ago. 
He killed Tom No, Cruise. I did uh, I I didn't see a video. Bro. I, I just saw people talking about it afterwards. Bro, that was like Call of Duty. That was disturbing. It was very disturbing. And then I, and then he said sorry to the last guy. I, I don't know why. The last guy he went to him and the guy looked at him, he didn't shoot him, and he's like sorry. It looked like because he was white on But he still shot him? No, no. He didn't shoot him and he told wow, him that's sorry. So weird. He shoot himself or no? He he was just shooting huh. minorities. He surrendered, it like, right? It looks like he was killing. Uh, it, it seemed like it was only black woman, honestly. And then when he seen the white guy, the worker, the worker's like, "Please no." He's like, "Sorry," and he walked away. Hmm. Did he? Did they get him? Um, like, was he arrested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How does that happen? He, uh, how did that even happen? I don't know. Maybe you ran out of Which bullets. Just I don't know. I no, no, no. I just, you have to switch in your brain. And... I'll take care, X. Uh, oh, Nick, no, no, I see no. your hand raised. I've, I've been inviting you. Uh, if you're not able to get up, uh, try leaving and coming back. Why, why uh, you... uh, yeah, I also see you, you, you cube. You cube. Yeah, wh- I'm trying to invite you. Hang on. Hang on. We'll get time. Uh, I'm trying to invite you guys, yeah, but um, if it's not working, you just have to leave and come back. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, you. whoever's talking. Why, why do you think it is that only in our country, you know, we're not the only country that allows guns. Why is it that we are the only ones who have these mass shootings? Um, we're not so the off only the top one of, that has yeah, mass shootings. Yeah, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not familiar with statistics, but I would say in the rule of odds, yeah, we can't be the only one that has mass shootings. Which, you know, I don't know how it's defined everywhere, but I, I believe in America and uh, United States, I think it's the FBI who defined mass shooting, and I think it's four or more people shot. I, I believe that's the definition of mass shooting. So if other countries don't have it as... Yeah, so I mean, if, if other countries don't have it as high, I would be curious if they're saying like they still have shootings, but it doesn't meet their definition, if we're all using the same definition. But also I would say, you know, America typically is a gun culture. So like, you know, I, I think... Um, I, I'm probably going to mess some, up, some stuff up here, but I, I believe like in Israel, guns are promoted, at least like rifles and stuff. Um, you know, I've seen like pictures before of like, you know, elderly women on like trains and stuff like holding rifles. So I, I believe in other countries where guns are, um, you know, promoted for like hunting or defense and things like that. They're, they're kind of looked at as arms linked. So even though people will do them, do this for these things, um, you know, th- their culture is not there so much like guns, ammo, explosions. You, you know, that seems to be like out of the like Midwest or uh, Midwest um, Old West holdover mentality. Um so it's not to say, you know, other people don't have like and use guns. They just keep them the arm's length because it's not really a gun culture. And I think that's just my best guess. I think it's like something ridiculous, like Norway or somewhere, somewhere like that has the biggest mass shooting um, ever. Oh, wow. I didn't it's somewhere that. that you it's it's somewhere that's supposed to be really peaceful. And it's mainly because nobody else is armed. Yeah, and I, and I mean, was, you know, uh, if, if we, I think it was New Zealand, right? It, it could be. I, it, it's somewhere that you wouldn't really think that. Yeah, yeah, it was at a huge mosque. mass shooting that it happened. Was at a mosque mm-hmm. and like they shot like fifty-five people. Down. Wow. Yeah, 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 that was in New Zealand. That live stream. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I guess just if lose it sometimes. I mean, just people just lose it. I I don't know what else to say. They're usually not in the right state of mind if they're going out. Is it, is it fair to say that we have by far the most? Because I don't really see news of other countries having random mass shootings like that. Maybe okay, they're at war. There's a reason for it, but randomly killing random people. That's like something I feel like we we got the most by. Well, you know, I probably, and I would say, you know, there's a whole host of reasons. Like, you know, you could probably have a, I mean, there probably is, um, you know, a whole, um, you know, doctorate degree around this, like sociology or, or all kinds of things. Because, you know, for one, think, okay, so we're very, very much a melting pot, right? So all races, cultures, religions, creeds, we, we have all of it. Like, that's what we've been known for. Um so we have all of this, and sometimes it works well, sometimes it does not. And when people can't, uh, 
synchronize and harmonize with each other, then there's these divisions and tensions, and it becomes very tribal, and people have to separate by religion, race, creed, all these other things. And, uh, you know, that drives extremes roots. So typically in a lot of other places around the world, it's very homogenous. And you, you have typically uh, a very, very much a majority of a race, a religion, a creed. And, you know, the minorities in that case are very small. I mean, very much minorities. And, uh, you know, they don't challenge the status quo uh, because it's like either this or that. But in America, we have this or that or that or that or that or that. And sometimes all the this is and all the that's don't play nice. And then the other thing that I, I'm just thinking off the top of my head is other places that you would say do have a lot of um, a lot more diversity, race, religion, creed, whatever, um, is typically ruled over by a more authoritarian government. So if people know um, that they step out of line, the government is going to come down on them like a sack of rocks. So just off the top of my head, those are some of the reasons I think uh, that the um, United States is the way it is, perhaps, because we have such a big melting pot and such a diverse melting pot. And also at the same time, uh, a huge amount of personal freedom that people take this freedom and then they take their differences and, you know, it, it can have these consequences. And then, the, you know, there's mental illness, there's drug use, there's there's just all there's probably too many to like accurately depict like it would take a lot of time and energy to really figure out but the point is there's a ton of variables yeah but if point, we ultimately have point. to come down on the side of something it's, i would say now i would say you know more guns the better because you know we already have guns so you know there's there's as many probably there's more guns than people so the point is who has those guns so people that don't care about laws well they don't care about laws so you know they're like all right i'll take guns i don't care what the law says so in that situation, the only people who wouldn't have guns are the people that follow the laws that say you can't have guns. So disproportionately, people who you would want to have guns have less guns than people you would not want to have guns. So I would say, you know, since the criminals are already going to have guns, you know, the criminals that want to have guns will have them. Um, you know, let's but lax the gun laws for people who do follow laws and care about things like that. Because uh, they have a better record of following laws, so they would be more, um, you know, more trustworthy to have a gun. So, you know, it's some, you this, yeah, the stats real quick. It the U.S. is actually pretty low on the mass shooting scale. So is Russia. The leader is Norway and France. I was thinking France for some reason. Yeah, but and then it goes into Serbia and somewhere else. But but. but Norway, for some reason, this is per capita, and this is if you can trust this website statistics, it's worldpopulationreview.com. But Nate, I, I guess I guess my question is, is what happens when these, you know, when people who call themselves patriots, are they criminals or are they just criminals when they just break the law? Because these are people you would typically want. They want to defend the country, but then they have these ideologies that say, well, when our country, we want our country. Oh, you're crackling, Xbox. Uh, go on, Patrick. You, you, you understand, like, what makes a criminal a criminal? So, when, when is a criminal a patriot or a patriot a criminal? It, it's because this is not. Define patriot. Well, I mean, you have you have you have these groups that are um, I forgot the, the title that we would call them. Um, I, I would say splinters uh, under underneath underground groups, or they, they're patriots. That's what they call themselves. Okay, so I guess th this is where, like, more than the actual issue we want to talk about, I'd say it has to be stated that linguistics and words matter. So, for example, if there was if there were two people. One person said, uh, I'm a patriot. And they say, what does that mean to you? And they say, I love God. I love my family. I love my country. I love the Constitution. You know, um, I love uh, limited government. I love maximum freedom. Um, I want people to be able to worship of any race, culture, creed, whatever, whatever God they want or don't believe in. Um, I want maximum freedom. And I want myself uh, and my family and friends protected from harm. And most people would say, wow, that's awesome. I'm glad you're a patriot. If the person standing next to them said, oh, oh, I'm also a patriot. And they say, well, what does that mean to you? 
and they say, uh, you know, I'm a skinhead neo-Nazi and I hate every race, culture and creed that is not just like mine and my close group of fellow hate mongers. And we want to exterminate everyone that's not just like us. I would say, oh, um, no, no, e everyone except, you know, you and your specific group has a problem with that. Um, so just because someone says they're a certain thing, words have to be defined because, you know, the first definition of a patriot, uh, hopefully, I mean, that sounds a lot like our founding fathers. And, uh, you know, they had different uh, they had different creeds and religions. Some were deists, some were Christians. So but ultimately, they were all they were all patriots in, in the founding sense of the word. Um, the first definition that most of us would all say that, yeah, that's great. But then you see people like the second, the second definition, which almost everyone except the people in that specific racist hate group would say, no, that's abominable. Like, get away from us. Like, you have no, you have no, um, you clearly cannot handle your freedom in a free world. And the same thing, like, I, to put it one more different way, I would rather, um, yeah, I, I can't even think. But you, you could apply that across the board to any hate group or any term. So if someone says they're, um, they're like part of the, I don't know, Black Panther Party. And you have two people who say that, and one says um, something like, well, you know, I just want uh, equality for everyone. And, y you know, um, their certain group of people have been oppressed for too long, and they need to see things uh, catch up and make amends, uh, you know, just good things, good attributes. Then I would say, okay, well, that sounds fine. But then if there's someone else that said they're a member of the Black Panther Party and, you know, sounded a lot like the, the second definition of a patriot, like, well, look, it's me and my group only. And if you're not like us, then, you know, we can use violence to get rid of you and all these other things. And I would say, well, no, no, the first definition of that was fine. The second definition is most certainly not fine. So I, I hope that would be something we would all consider that. That, that, that make is just that uh, it, it, things get skewed there because well, with what happened over the weekend, this is not this is not like random this is this is stuff that's been happening forever i mean but we we don't I mean, this is stuff that's been happening for a long time it's just been spread out over over the years this this is not like new to our history yeah so yeah. my that uh, how, can I... how does the guy how does the guy not get shot? how does what how does how does the guy who did this at, in Buffalo not get shot by the police? I, I, uh, well, uh, so so uh, again, based on based on what I heard, uh, I think it was. Hang on, someone keeps clicking. If if you're not speaking, you've got to mute. There, there's way too much feedback. But uh, I, I was I was watching some people speak. They were they were giving eyewitness testimonies after it happened, and what I heard, uh, this is you know what the eyewitness person said was they saw the guy after he was done done shooting and, and going on his rampage. He took off his vest. He dropped his weapons. He uh, put his hands up and dropped to the floor and surrendered. So, I, I mean, in that case, like, even, I mean, we are a country of laws, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm in former law enforcement. So if you show up as a police officer and he's actively shooting, then return fire, neutralize the threat. Um, but if you show up, you're bound by law. You would be committing a crime if you show up and this guy had surrendered. His hands are up. His weapons are down. He's no longer a threat. If you shoot him, those people are guilty of a crime. So if, if the sus suspect is surrendering, you have to accept their surrender. And that's just the laws of the country we live. I don't know if New York differs slightly, but shooting an unarmed suspect is absolutely a crime. So if he didn't get shot, and that is true, then that's that's the reason. I know I'm with you with it. It's just that we've seen we've seen situations where people are unarmed and they get shot with their hands. I mean, in the same predicament. So that's what I'm wondering is that how we've seen video of it. The people have their hands up and everything and, and somehow they get shot. But a person, but in this specific to folks that do these kinds of crimes, they never get killed. They always well, wait, get killed you, peacefully. These type of crimes, again, I'm, I'm curious of the statistics, but these type of like mass shooting crimes, isn't the majority doesn't end with like, them shooting themselves and like doing suicide um maybe, maybe i don't know about this country i i know in other countries they're probably that might happen where they kill themselves but i've never seen it happen here um, oh yeah I, I think like especially like i, I think 
gosh, I mean, I'm, I'm going off memory, but I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, in the mass shootings we've seen on the on breaking news in the last few years, it seems like whether it's a school shooting or whatever mass shooting, like it, it oftentimes ends with them killing themselves. It is um, possible. I'm just, when, when I saw the video, like the, I don't know, the other gentleman said, I thought it was like a video game. I literally thought it was Call of Duty. It was, I'm talking about, now I now I wouldn't want my kids to play the games and and you know you you might say hey, hey you know it sounds ridiculous but it literally disturbed me because it, it feel people in front of you dropping. So baptize you want to say something? Uh yeah, uh, we're in a Christian room. I want to get your opinion on when Jesus said, "Sell your cloak and buy a sword." Is a sword an AK forty seven? Uh, the reason I say that is a popular Christian on, on Clubhouse, he uh, went to the Black Life Matter peaceful protest carrying an AK-47. Do you think Jesus meant for us to carry AK-47s in today's society when he said, buy a sword? Well, so first, I, I hate to be the one to slow the conversation down, but things should be considered. So, you know, when people said that, what I mean, what did Jesus actually mean? So, uh, you know, he said, buy a sword. And he, this was because, if, if you look at the context, the disciples were going on a journey. They were going traveling. So did Jesus mean buy a sword offensively so you could convert people by force? Obviously not, because he outright says, you know, if people don't receive your message, shake the dust from your feet as a testament against them and leave them to their fate. So clearly we can extrapolate Jesus did not mean for any sort of force to be um, to be offensive. So did that mean then, which is more debatable, did Jesus mean for self-defense? So on their road, if they get attacked by a person, can they use the threat of force or deadly force uh, defensively to prevent an attack, even if it means the, the killing of a person, would, even though it's justified? Or would he have meant that exclusively for like, you know, wild animals attacking them or something like that? Um, and, and, you know, the Bible's not clear. So the general consensus um, general consensus. The consensus seems to be that Jesus is definitely talking about self-defense to protect your personhood. Um, so I would say that's first of all. So self-defense definitely not to be used offensively. I, and I then think, from that, the, well, well, hang on, hang on, um, to, to, fin to hang on to, fin to finish the thought since you asked the question. So if we can settle on Jesus, uh, you know, said buy, sell your cloak and buy a sword for defensive use, not offensive, because he clearly fights back or says don't do it offensive then where does that extend to? And is that like, um, you know, if we can extend that to the founding of the country where they use muskets, where there was no AK-47, then can you say, well, a sword is basically a, a metaphor for self-defense. So no, we shouldn't always have swords. We should have whatever, uh, whatever the most practical self-defense tool is. So in the founding of the country, that would have been a musket and, and also still a sword or a rapier or something. And now in 2022, well, um, the most I'm, we, I'm almost done, man. I know I'm being exhaustive, but I'm I'm trying to cover a lot of bases here. I'm I'm almost done. I'm at the last the last third of what I wanted to say, which addresses your question. So now, if we can extrapolate self-defense and a sword to the most practical form of defense, well, the most practical form of defense today would be something like you know uh, an AR assault, uh, which AR is not assault rifle; it's armor, right? By the way, but some sort of a, what people refer to as assault rifles like that type of weapon or a shotgun or a, you know, concealed carry handgun of some type. So that would be the equivalent of the sword today. If we're saying Jesus meant practical self-defense, not that we should push for sword, uh, concealed carry sword control. So uh, that well, would be, that would um, be my answer. <laughs> well, um, like we asked, uh, or, uh, when does a Christian become a criminal? Because uh, going to a, peaceful black life uh, protest carrying an AK-47, would you consider that Christian a uh, peaceful protester? Okay, can I, so... Uh, can I say something uh, real yeah, quick? Um, uh, just, uh, one, one, it's on the same subject. It's on the same okay, subject. Okay, real quick, because, yeah, real there's quick. something I'd like to clarify. Go ahead, Amy. Okay, so... Go ahead. Um, just, just wanted to kind of disagree with you, Nate. Um, Jesus also said a script. Uh, there's a verse about about weapons he said those who hold the sword are also going to perish by the sword 
So Jesus is very specific and clear that that you should not, even in self-defense, you should not use a weapon, even um, okay. if it leads to your death. He's very strict okay. on that. Now, there's well, a really good reason why, though. Um, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus is going to secure the, the kingdom for you. So there's no need for, for you to self-defense. If somebody, there's a murder that, that kills you, Jesus is going to bring justice to that, and you're going to go to heaven. But it's a hard pill to swallow for us because we we have to kind of have faith that, that Jesus is going to secure that. And realistically, in the real world, a lot of people choose to use self-defense. It's a tough pill to swallow. Well, okay, so, well, first of all, I, I, well, I guess you could disagree with me, but I, I didn't really give my personal opinion. Um, so I guess, you know, if we, if we can say the consensus is Jesus agreed with self-defense, I understand you could disagree with me there. But I would say, so, you know, a point that should be noted, um, if some, Romans 14, if something is a sin to someone, then for that person it is a sin. If you honestly feel that defending yourself is, is wrong and it's sinful and you defend yourself anyway, then that is a sin for you. Uh, if you have peace about it, like, you know, who are you to judge another man's servant uh, by his master? He will stand or fall, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. This is some biblical wisdom from Romans. So, um, you know, to that same per or to a, a, another person in that same situation, if they feel peace about defending themselves and do not feel it is a sin, then for that person, it is not a sin. So even if we extrapolate what you're saying, Aiden, um, and the perfect Christian answer is if someone says, I'm going to kill you and your whole family uh, after I torture you, um, if the perfect answer is to say, okay, and just give in and let them torture and murder your whole family, that may be a, a very Christian martyr, martyrdom thing to do. Um, however, there, there's, if that's perfect, there may be some who would perfectly fulfill that, but most of us are being going to be caught in a human moment and try to uh, you know, preserve life of our family and friends um, and ourselves. So even if that was the perfect Christian thing, many of us uh, would fail to do that. However, I would disagree and say that's not what the Bible speaks of. What you're talking about is if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. And this is specifically talking about if you go around um, living your life this way. Like imagine, imagine like a warlord or someone who lives their life by the sword, by, the, by force, by violence. That's typically how they're going to meet their fate, by force and by violence. Makes sense. So he's not saying if you just have, um, you know, if you're defending yourself, it, like if anyone ever tries to to harm me or my family and I use force to defend myself, I'm not living my life that way. I'm not living my life by the sword. I don't want to be by the sword. I don't want to live my life by the sword. So if I have to pick up a, a version of the sword to defend myself, that doesn't apply because I'm not living my life by the sword. Get, get what I'm saying? This is like a lifestyle I, I... versus a one off. Okay, um, I disagree with this scripture. There's well, a verse that says... Well, hold on, because we skipped... Hang on, we skipped I... baptized. You said it was going to be... Wait, wait, wait. You, you said it was going to be real quick, so we did that sort of quick. But the, the, to, to well, baptize um, is quick. One, one thing I just no, want to mention... Wait, stop, stop, stop. No, okay? no, no, hang on. No, no, hang on. This is, a, this is clearly a hot topic, and we've got to maintain some sort of control. So, Aiden, we, we address you, even though it wasn't super quick. We'll come back to you. But baptize asked a question twice now, and I don't know who you're referring to, and I don't need names. I don't want names about whoever the Christian here is that did what you say. But let's define because there's all these like there's all these like trigger words, right? So we have to make sure the word actually means what the word means. So if someone says a BLM protest and they say it's a peaceful BLM protest, well, we have I mean historically we have different versions of the word peaceful. So if it's truly the definition of peace, where there's no violence, there's no call to violence, there's no threats of force, and it's, you know, holding up signs, and, uh, you know, they're protesting, they have some chant or some slogan that is, that is for justice, it is not a call to violence or anything like that, then I would say um, to uh, – for, for the person that did that there, in, in any case, the person that intentionally goes – armed to the teeth, open uh, with a gun, with a show of force. Um, it may be their legal right. So legally, I, I would say, yes, that should be protected because that's their constitutional right. Um, even if it is inflammatory, because if they're not violent, if they're not being violent, if they're just standing there with a weapon as a show of force, that's not wise at all. That's very unwise. You should not do that. But if they want to legally, 
that is their constitutional right, and it should be respected. So then if that causes people on the other side who, who are protesting or whatever to become violent or become aggressive because of that show of force, the criminal is the, is the one that commits the crime. So whoever commits the first crime, if they go from, from verbal exchanges to an actual crime that's, that's defined by law, then that person is the criminal. If, if the other side then commits a, a, a subsequent crime, then they are also the criminal. So you have a situation where everyone can become criminals, and the criminal is whoever commits the crime. The last thing I'll say, Baptize, is if it's uh, when people on the news, uh, some of the news outlets during, um, was it Kenosha, Wisconsin, where there's like billions of dollars of damage burned and like looting and rioting, like legitimate riots by the definition of the word, and people were murdered and harmed and things like that. Um, and they said that was a peaceful BLM protest. And, and you know, that, that same, if that Christian, whoever you're talking about, did that show of force, also, 100% unwise. That is not expressing or exercising wisdom in any degree. But it would still be their constitutional right to be able to do that. Um, but that would not be a peaceful protest. So uh, that would be my first question. Is it truly a peaceful protest in the sense of the word? Or is it pe called peaceful, but it's really the opposite of that? And then, so that was legally and, and the term of the word. The last thing on this is biblically speaking, no, I think, I think that is not exercising biblical wisdom. Paul calls us to, he says, as much as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. So I would say uh, doing something that is like that, even though it's their legal right, is not adhering to biblical wisdom or scripture because they know, unless they're just a very special case, which I would say they need other help, but they just have to know that by doing that, that is not a call to live at peace with all people as far as it depends on them. So that would be my answer. Um, no, it, it is unwise biblically and legally. Legally, it should it sh is their protected right. Uh, biblically, um, that is not living at peace with all men as far as I believe. But I'm also not going to say they're not a true Christian or damning them to hell because of it. Does that answer your question, Baptized? Uh, I think I forgot it now, but... <laughs> Uh, I've got a suggestion for the uh, the clubhouse room. Uh, I noticed a lot of Christian sites now are taking the uh, one minute thirty second rule, or even up to three minutes, where you when you give somebody the mic, they have a freedom of at least a minute to just speak without being stepped on. Uh, just something to consider. And uh, you kind of answered my last question when I I said you have to consider this is a Christian going to a peaceful uh, black life protest carrying an AK-47. And how can you follow love your neighbor as yourself carrying an AK-47? But anyway, I thank you for the time and good luck. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I have heard some people recommend time limits and I know, uh, and you know, <laughs> I'm probably, yeah. gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to take less than a minute 30 explaining, explaining my view on this. So time limits are great. Um, you know, to a point, if you're a moderator, you know, moderators, like whoever's a moderator here, I'll give them extra leniency because they're a moderator. They're the ones running the room, um, even though sometimes they can be lengthy and I know I can be lengthy. Um, I like to think there's a purpose. So if someone is speaking who's not a moderator and they're asking a question or something like that, people like to get preachy, including myself. But I'm a moderator. So, you know, love me or hate me. Here I am. But um, yeah. And I like to let people have the freedom to finish their question. But as a moderator of a Christian room, I do feel some responsibility. So if someone starts making absolute statements that I are wholeheartedly antithetical to Christianity or what we're talking about, I feel there's a responsibility to stop them and not let them continue so I can express disagreement. So the whole room listening doesn't think, oh, the Christians aren't disagreeing. This must be right. They must agree. So I would say there are circumstances where they're saying something so far out of line that would demand immediate stoppage. Otherwise, I'd like to give them leniency to at least finish the question. And in the case of me talking forever and ever and monologuing, it's being exhaustive. So, so I, I disagree with what? Nate um, completely. Uh, Jesus wasn't joking when he wrote the – he. The Bible is, is that, God's is word. That me or? There is no – I mean, is there a scripture or verse that advocates self-defense? Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a verse. I'm I'm sorry. Can I can I come in for a bit before we go on uh, that conversation about self defense? Uh, well, before um, you yeah. before you ask that, I just 
want to disagree with Nate a lot because it Jesus is yeah. God's not joking around. God's not gonna say, "Oh, you could do this, but then you can't do that," and contradict himself. That that's very dangerous. That's a very dangerous road to to take. So maybe I'm wrong, and there is a verse that that supports holding the sword. But from what I read, there there is no such case. From what I read, maybe I'm wrong. So I'm I'm just gonna tell Baptize that I I. I, I get where you're coming from. I think you make a lot of good points, Baptized. Um, someone just going there with an AK or with, with a rifle to a peaceful protest, you know, could be into question, right? Um, yeah, you, the, uh, you are. The... Yeah, we're, we're, hang on, hang on, Odie, we're coming right to you. But Aiden, um, you are wrong, and there is a verse, and Baptized is the one that actually brought up that verse. It's the verse that talks about sell your uh, cloak to buy a sword because, um, you know, they're going on a journey. So is it to protect himself from robbers, from wild animals, whatever, but there, there is a verse. But um, correct me on your theological um, bent. Aren't you an atheist? It doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Oh, so there is a verse. Okay. Um, sounds good. Um, I'm agnostic. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, Odie, what's up? Hey. Um... First of all, I, I just wanted to chip in on the matter of moderation. The last time I was on this uh, room, I had a really unpleasant time toward the end of it. And I would have preferred if someone just said, look, you have a minute to say what you have to say. Try to make your point within that time. Rather than, okay, just go on and talk. And then someone who apparently seemed to be a moderator kept cutting in and essentially dictating what theology had to be in a matter that was a little more open than he was actually stating. Now, the reason I say that is everyone has a right. If you create a room and you're managing a particular club or room, whatever the case is, you have an absolute right to say what the rules are. So if someone does not belong there, they can say, okay, I don't belong here. I don't, if I go in here, all I'll do is just raise a lot of dust and to no real purpose. We don't all agree on everything the Bible teaches, and that's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but the reason it's fine is, well, we can't all agree. We have to agree on some things, disagree on others. So when we are clear on what exactly it is that we're not questioning in a particular room, we're not questioning in a particular club, then on that basis, we build our conversations. If anyone is crossing the line, he has to know, I'm crossing the line here. The instant I say this, it's going to change the culture of the room. So I would say it would be good if these things are clear so that someone doesn't step in and say, well, we're all Christians here. And when you start talking, all of a sudden you're at loggerheads with everyone. It would be better if you just knew where you stood. So that's the um, first thing I wanted to say. Then uh, earlier on when I came into the room, I actually heard something about criminals and Patriots, and I think you've cleared up the criminal part because I was a little confused that anyone would be asking whether someone is a criminal before they break the law. I mean, aren't you a criminal because you broke the law? I mean, that seems to me to be the um, definition of a crime. Then the question of patriotism, I think it's just essentially loyalty to a particular country or a nation like if you're, a, if you're an American patriot, you stand for the American ethos, the American ideal, that's what I would expect. And if you're a Nigerian patriot, then you stand for the Nigerian ideal, the Nigerian dream, whatever that might mean. Um, but if you're not a patriot, you're probably someone who really is not that sold on the country's philosophies or values or whatever. That's what I actually thought. Then on the matter of self-defense and stuff, <clears throat> I can remember, unless we do believe that God actually changed or that Jesus is not God, then we have to explain why in the Old Testament there are all these wars, both initiated and sanctioned by the Lord. And we actually see in Revelation the Lord Jesus himself going to war with the armies of the Antichrist. <clears throat> and in Zechariah 14, there is a very graphic description of how he actually slaughters all of those troops. So if, if we think that being a Christian is necessarily a non-violent affair, you cannot defend yourself, cannot use violence in any 
respect in and then we would have to explain how all of these passages make sense in the Christian ethos. So I don't think that um, the the passage in Matthew actually says that uh, we ought never to use violence. I think Jesus was saying to Peter at that point, look, there is no sense in your violence here. Nobody has done anything to you. You have no cause to exercise your right to self-defense because no one has attacked you. It's actually me they came for, and all they have done for now is ask who it is. Uh, you know, uh, they, they came to arrest me, essentially. So your preemptive action here is only causing more trouble. Um, so later on, when uh, in, in Luke 22, where he says, um, uh, if, if you have a cloak, sell it and buy a so something like that. Um, there have been a lot of uh, overwrought arguments on the whole thing. And I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, unless we start reading metaphors into everything, I think what the Lord Jesus was saying was pretty simple. Depending on where you live, I live in Nigeria in the middle belt of Nigeria, which is not quite like many of the um, countrysides in the U.S. or in Europe, it's a pretty violent place. And for all that, I actually don't own any weapons to, to protect myself, but I actually have a biblical right to own one. But I actually don't have a legal right to own one in this country. So, which is actually why you have um, a bunch of people from the Fulani extraction actually invading whole communities, slaughtering people and just making off. And then we say, of course, the Lord will um, avenge them, which is true. It's what we believe, but it's not what the scriptures teach in the sense that we ought never to defend ourselves. It's, there is no ought there. If you're able to then do so, if you would rather not, then you should probably leave the place that's actually so dangerous to you, if you can. If you can't, then use whatever recourse is available to you. So um, my mentor would actually say something along the lines of, if you live in lion country, then there is need. You actually have a responsibility to protect yourself. That's how he would put it. And I actually buy into that, that philosophy. It makes sense in my reading of the Bible. I don't think I see anything in the Bible that goes contrary to that. Yes, I agree with your assessment. Uh, Nicholas, you haven't spoke yet. Did you have anything to say? Hey, what's up, everybody? God bless everyone. I'm just listening to you guys. Um, and... You know, as far as Luke, um, as far as Luke 22 goes, if we read what's going on in that chapter, the Lord knows, our Lord knows what's about to happen to him, okay? And he knows that, like, I'm sorry, I'm, the, I'm going on a hike, so I might seem a little out of breath. Um, and he knows that when the shepherd will be struck, that the sheep would be scattered. Okay. Um, I, 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 as a Christian, I believe every man has the right to defend his family. A hundred percent. I, I forgot who was saying when they were like, uh, I forgot who was saying this, that they were, um, you know, if they're going to a peaceful protest, like what, you know, there's no sense in having a gun. I, I completely agree with that. Um, you know, I, I believe that we are called as Christians to defend our family. I mean, I, I don't think because we're Christian, you know, all of a sudden that's got to make us uh, weak and, uh, you know, and, uh, and dainty. You know, I, I think quite the opposite. I think one of the most manly things anybody can do is um, submit, their self, submit themselves to Christ and be a follower of Christ, right? Um, so... As far as, you know, uh, what the brother was saying before about God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, you have to think in context of, of the covenant and what was going on and God's agreement with the Jewish people versus Abraham versus the new covenant, right? So when we see different things, like when we see God telling Israel to go you know, to go wipe out the Amalekites, you know, there was a reason for it. These people, they were killing their babies. They were doing, they were doing wicked things. Okay. And God had a covenant with these people 
and he was to keep that covenant with them, right? So God acts within the boundaries of his word. So, you know, I, I don't think we could say that the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament. When I read my Bible, I, I, I read the same God, but we just have to read it in its proper context. Like, for example, like when you go and read the Quran, you know, the, all these stories are mixed in together. You know, it's it's hard to, you know, to understand. You could just take out a verse and say, oh, look here. See, it says, you know, X, Y, Z over here and to support your claim. But with the Bible, it's much harder to do that because this is a story that, you know, was going on for over, you know, 3,000 years. Okay. And you have the beginning of the, the beginning of the covenants. You have the seven covenants. And then you have the uh you have the palestinian covenant and then that goes into the new covenant right and god acts within the confines of his covenant yeah i mean it seems like we're a lot on the same page and mark if, yeah yeah it, yeah mark, if you're down there able to speak i'd love to hear your um your view on uh, self-defense and the things in the Bible we're talking about, but if you can, if you're driving or something, that's fine. But yeah, anyone else have anything to say about that? Since there's only, you know, three other speakers? Let me go ahead and invite some people. Mo! Oh, Mo! I would love to hear your take on this. We're talking about guns, Mo. Yeah, um, can I add something <laughs> to what he said? Uh, yeah, go, yeah, go ahead real fast. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, I think within the context of the times that um, various things were written, uh, certain things made sense, and outside of those contexts, it didn't really make sense. But I always think of Genesis chapter 9, which essentially sets the tone for the creation of human governments. In fact, th this would, what they, it, it would actually amount to what we might call the divine decree that created human government as a thing, because up to that point, there was no such thing, really. What we see in Genesis chapter, uh, I think, 4, 5, and 6 seems to be the Lord still ruling directly over men rather than actually having human rulers through whom he perpetuated his authority. But in Genesis chapter 9, after the flood, he says, if any man takes the life of another, another man will take his life as well. This was sanctioning the use of violence, deadly violence to protect human life, which is something, you know, many Christians of this age don't take too very kindly, especially after the wars of religion of the, I think the 16th and 17th centuries, very bloody times. So, but the fact of it is, the Lord does want us to live within the context of life in this world. This is not yet the millennium, the reign of Christ, and we're certainly not in eternity yet where the Lord is ruling directly over the affairs of men and, you know, everyone is answering to him in a specific way. Right now, he is operating through the authority of rulers and governments, so to speak, within the home, just like Nicholas said, within the home, the man is responsible to protect his family. And outside in the city, the governor is responsible to protect the city. The king is responsible to protect the nation. The president or whoever may be standing in that position is responsible to protect the nation. And sometimes that protection will require deadly force, you know. So this, all of this leads us to one kind of thought that at the very least, we must not rule out deadly violence as something immoral. We must understand that it's something that has its place. We shouldn't be quick to use it. We shouldn't be in a hurry to break it out to prove that no one can harm us or we, can, we have ourselves covered. But we need to understand that sometimes there's a, there's a need for it and we have a responsibility to use it. So no, for I that reason... Yeah. Well, hang on, I wanted to get... Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like we're all saying the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> I think so, uh, anyway. Mo left. I wanted to hear what Mo thought about it. Anyway. I think he, I think he like, might come back on. I respect, I would respect the man if, if the Christian, there was a Christian man that wouldn't defend himself and was martyred. I would respect that. But if he 
did defend himself and, and his family. You see, I think like for me, um, I know if it was, if I was, if my family, I, I would, I would fight. Right. But if I was martyred, I mean, I know where I'm going, you know, and I, and I think, uh, I think it was you who said that, uh, who said about, you know, Christ securing the kingdom, uh, in this room, somebody's Christ secured the kingdom for you. And, and I, 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 man, I totally agree with that. We have eternal life, you know, and when we leave this world, we're going to go be with the king. And when we're with the king, we're going to for like, I'm sure we won't completely forget out of mind, but I, I don't think it would really bother us as much. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think so I get I, it. I agree with that. I think, and there's, there's a caveat too. In the context of persecution, because that happens when, for example, as it was in times of Paul and the other apostles, Christianity was outlawed you know, necessarily made an illegal religion. If you were a Christian, you were a criminal for being a Christian. I'm not sure if that was in the time of Paul and the apostles, but it certainly happened um, early in the church history. So if, if that is the case, where your very faith is illegal, in that case, I would say defending yourself with weapons might actually be a problem. Because in this case, what I see from the scriptures is if the law is against you for your faith, that's persecution accepted. The Lord will actually be the one to deliver you. But when there is criminal perpetuation of violence against you, which means the law does not permit this, like you have a home invader, you have an armed robber who's going to shoot you dead or an assassin after you, that sort of thing. And these things are unlawful. You have a right to defend yourself. But when the law itself turns against you, in that case, whatever you do is going to amount to an insurrection. And in that case, you will have to deal with Romans 13, which is a problem. Welcome back, Darren. Do you have thoughts on this? Do you know what we're talking about? I think you left before I started. No, I, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Uh, so someone brought up the recent shootings in New York and California, and then it went to, uh, you know, Christians and Jesus and self-defense, yes or no, and, uh, you know, fun stuff like that. Now, do you have thoughts? Oddly enough, I do. Uh, something I've had to work through recently, I, uh, you know, as you guys may be aware, it may not, I've, my family and I recently made the, the decision to switch to uh, Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Um, and in doing so, our priest had a very, and again, he's a California native, he's not real privy to guns. I live in Missouri where you're born, they pretty much give you one at birth. Um, but uh, he was very, very adamant about the, the stance on self-defense and orthodoxy and all that. And it's, uh, it's an interesting take for sure. I don't know that's going to deter me from, you know, doing what I got to do to protect myself. But at the same time... I don't know what were, what was the thoughts in the room. What what did uh, what was the kind of the? Uh, well, you're. I don't know if you're hitting your microphone a lot, but there's a lot of crackling from you. Oh, I'm but, sorry. Um, I'm digging through. There a is chest of gear. Oh, that's okay. There's a. I think there was a couple people that seemed to suggest, uh, you know, no violence, no matter what. But take it for what you will. One of them is agnostic, so, you know, usually they take kind of an antagonistic approach. So, uh, you know, consider that. But I think there was one one Christian baptized. I, I don't remember if you were saying never self defense, or I think you just raised the question. You can you can clarify here in a second. But yeah, the the overwhelming majority of people are like, yes, Jesus um, seems to suggest that self defense is just fine. Um, and it was based on the verse that talks about when he sent his disciples and says, sell your cloak and buy a sword. And we're like, well, you know, he he definitely doesn't mean offensive. He doesn't mean convert people by force because he says as much. You know, when he talks about um, when he sends the people out and says, you know, if, if these people receive your message, then stay and teach them um, about eternal life. But if they reject you and your message, then shake the dust from your feet as a testament against them and leave them to their own faith. So certainly there's no there's no um, leeway in there for offensive use of a weapon, because if, you know, other people may say, well, I have to convert you by force. So, you know, you have eternal life. Well, Jesus himself says, no, shake the dust from your feet and leave them to their fate. 
So and you know that that was actually the 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 shaking of the dust off the feet. That was actually um, a sign of a Jewish curse. Um, yes, and that comes back from from Genesis, kicking up the dust. You know, is is that that you're cursing them, and then that testimony would be seen at the resurrection. You know, that's what that was about. Um, yeah, thanks for that insight. Just saying. I, I, yeah, I knew yeah, it was a, I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I knew it was a curse. I didn't know the whole uh, the whole nuance of it. So thanks for that. That was enlightening. But yeah, and then he oh, seems to be fine with self defense. But, but then he seems to be fine with self defense because he's like, you know, buy so your code can buy a sword. And then it's just argued like, well, what what is self defense or what degree of self defense is that to use against like wild animals attacking on the road, or is that to use against like people attacking on the road? And uh, you know, it's it's ambiguous. He doesn't say outright. You could just uh, infer that, you know, he's talking about some, some sort of self-defense. And I know most people will fall on, yeah, that means self-defense. So anyone that's trying to harm yourself, defend it. That's kind of where we landed. Yeah, that's kind of my feeling. I, um, when I, you know, I teach self-defense. I don't teach anything weapons-wise, but hand-to-hand -hand I certainly do. And I train self-defense with, with weapons myself, but I don't teach it. And, you know, I teach and have been taught that you basically meet force with force. If someone's willing to <laughs> apply deadly force, then that's what you're going to have to use to, to be able to circumvent that. Um, but never do you assert that force initially, and that's kind of where we stand on it. What about your priest? What's his view on it? He believes that um, situations like that uh, leave the opening for divine, divine encounter um, and that you are to have faith that... You know, Christ's will, God's will is played out in that encounter, um, to which I don't know if I agree or not. Yeah, and I would say, uh, funny enough, that's the, Walter, don't leave, I want your opinion. Um, back, funny enough, that's I couldn't the hear stance. The, oh, okay, that's the stance the um, agnostic took. <laughs> don't know what that says, but, you know, take it for what you will. But, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, of course, God's will is ultimately going to be done. Um, but also, is it God's will that you defend yourself if you can? There you go. So it's like, uh, you know, remember, remember that uh, story? It was like a modern parable about the guy who was uh, in a boat, and he was, his boat was sinking, he was drowning, and he's like, God, please deliver me. So, like, a helicopter comes by. He's like, no, no, God. And they're like, can we, say, can we save you? And he's like, no, no, God will save me. So they leave, and, like, another boat comes by, and he's like, All right, do you need help? And he's like, no, no, God will save me. And then, like, another one, like, someone on the bank with a really long rope came over, and they're like, hey, grab this rope. And he's like, no, no, God will save me. So he dies. He drowns. He gets to heaven. He's like, God, why didn't you save me? He's like, I sent you a person with a line, a boat, and a helicopter. What more do you want? So it's like, you know, kind of like God helps those who help themselves. I, I hate that, but it's also not always wrong. So, you know, could God's will be to uh, take matters into your own hands? So some people take that too far, like people that say, you know, um, that do what the Bible says not to do. So if they say, you know, the, the world is blah, blah, blah. And, you know, God wants uh, wants us to be his weapons of war. It's like, wow, get me away from that guy. Like, he is in a doomsday cult or something. So, you know. Well, yeah, but God's explicit. weapons of war We're, is his word. God's weapons in that of war sense, is his word, you know. Yeah, that's not the way these dudes mean it. They, no, they mean, I know like, that. I know that. Yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, Mole, yeah, have you heard enough of this to know what we're talking about? No, I have not. It's a lar it was well now it's kind of more theological. It was largely political, but I think it'd be a, an interesting take. So uh, someone talked. Part. So yeah. someone talked about the shootings in Buffalo and California over the weekend, and we were kind of going down that route and y you know gun issues and you know why is America yeah. like the Wild West and there's so many guns and should we have more guns should we have less guns and uh, that. So without any of us influencing your opinion, what do you think about just all of that. Well, I mean, I think guns have a use, like, okay. and they're protected by the Second Amendment. But I think also that if someone is, uh, what did he, did that kid threaten that I could shoot his school up or something? If they could figure out a way to track that and then not you know, buy a gun, but I mean, it's pretty hard to. Yeah, like basically, uh, yeah, so kind of where we came down was. Well, my view is an armed society is a polite society. So it's not like more guns is an issue. We already have more guns. Like more, there's more guns than people. So gun, getting less guns is just a fool's errand. So it's, you know, my view is kind of like, well, well, look, um, we are any criminal that wants a gun 
does not care about your gun control. They do not care. So anyone who should not have a gun because they get one with, with disregard for laws, they should not have a gun. But it doesn't matter because they already have a gun. So the only people you're impacting by regulated gun control laws are people who actually care about the laws. And yeah, those because are the people I'm... you would want and those are the people you would want to have a gun. So it's like, well, in any amount of non uh, you know, people who disregard the regard the law are gonna get a gun. So we need to even at odds with trustworthy people who respect laws and give them the ability to legally carry. So, you know, you even out the criminal with the law abiding citizen. So then if there's a mass shooting, sure, they may kill one or two people before anyone knows what's going on. But that all the people, all the law abiding citizens would definitely um, be able to limit uh, turn 50 into two or three. So it would be bad for those two or three that died, but they wouldn't be able to kill many more people than that if they've got a bunch of guns aimed at them is my thought. And Nate, can I ask you a question, brother? So uh, you, one second, I, I, well, I was asking Mo, give us one second. Yeah, 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 I, agree. Sorry, sorry, man. I agree. Cause like, if you, if you drive up, if I drive a couple hours up into Wyoming from where I'm at, um, there's not many home invasions because pretty much everybody has a gun. Like it's just, it's not even an issue. So you'd be, you'd be pretty stupid to like break into a house in, you know, most of those rural areas and most of those places where it's just, everybody has one. That's just what you do. Exactly. Can you imagine if we were having these social media exchanges that are just like cesspools of like violence and hate and uh, – well, not violence, but vitriol and hate? Like blah, 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 like all, all the time if this was like – well, first of all, if it, was, it was, if it was face-to-face, it would be a lot more polite because people can't hide behind their screens. And then if we were in a society where – you know, I think there's like some county in Texas or something that, that made it a law that you had to have a gun or something like that. Anyways, can you imagine how polite these religious discussions would go? Oh, and it's like, yeah, look, I so humbly and respectfully just just disagree with you. <laughs> well, I, would, with I, you. Would the, I would be the same as I am here. I am a little more uh, harsh if, in writing. But like, if you watch any of those Texas uh, – I had an occasion where I was sitting in the hospital for a while with someone. And you know, I'm watching just this those Texas – like. This law or something like that, like basically like the fish and game people. Everybody in rural, you know, parts of Texas, everybody has a gun. It's like it's not even a. It's like yeah, okay, it, oh yeah, I got a you know the the rifles in the back of the car, and a, there's a nine, uh, you know, a whatever a nine millimeter or something too. Like it's okay, yeah. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> everybody has one. Nicholas, what were you gonna say? So I, I, you know, I could be wrong because I, I mean, I haven't read statistics on that, but I mean, I kind of of what I observe is that you know most of these gun crimes that are committed are done with illegal weapons, right? So it, it, it's like you, you, people are going to get their hands on the people that want to commit crime, or people are going to get their hands on guns anyway. Is is how I feel. You know, and I think the more people that have guns, the better. And the 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 re and the reason I say that is because look at look at like like what uh what, what brother was just saying before. You know, in these areas where everyone has guns, you know, nobody's breaking in and and you know doing all these things because they, everyone's got a gun. Everyone has protect protection. I do think that people should be vetted. Before they have a gun, um, you know, if you have, you know, I don't think somebody who has, um, you know, maybe some certain mental health issues or, you know, whatever should really own a gun. You know what I mean? Um, but I think that we should have them, man, because what, what about all the times when, when there were other people coming, when there were criminals coming? with a gun and you had a pedestrian, I mean, you had a, um, you had just an, a normal lay person with a gun and stopped the crime. I mean, that happens all the time and we just don't hear about it in the news because it's not a part of, you know, doesn't support their narrative of what they're trying to do. But For, what are I the think problems those gun though, control with, with what's the, that? I think you got a little bit of a problem though with the um, mental health stuff. Cause you know, I, 
what everybody could say they at one point they suffered from depression or anxiety or whatever like I, I mean, well, I'm talking about yeah. maybe someone who has has psychotic episodes. You know, I'm not yeah. necessarily saying somebody who's deal- who's never dealt with depression or something like ADD or ADHD. I mean, yeah. mental health, you know, mental health affects most of us in, in some way, shape, or form. But I'm saying somebody who is known for having, you know, uh, I don't know, outbursts, uh, psychotic outbursts or episodes or, you know, someone who, like you know, you wouldn't want to give a gun to because they might harm themselves or somebody else, you know, so I do think, you know, people should, you know, I think the background check is, is fine and, and all that, but, um, then, yeah, I don't know. If there's a way to do it, I think, I think you're right. It's just, I don't don't know how practically you can do that. Like, it's, well, I mean, more, (laughs) it's like more laws, more problems. And it's like, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, like in that vein. Yeah. Because, you know, in a perfect world, you know, we want only the most trustworthy, vetted people. Uh, and, and if the way to get there is through, like, you know, mental examinations or things like that. Um, oh, okay, for example, um, remember the, uh, oh, gosh, was it the red flag law that came out, like, uh, a little while ago that everyone foolishly supported because they, they can't see the forest for the trees? But it's like, uh, I, I'm probably messing this up, but it was something like if you suspect a family member or someone um, – has, who has a weapon could become violent. Um, you can call the police, and they can basically no questions asked, show up, take their weapons. That sounds yeah, good, no, right? That's crazy. That, no, right, right. Crazy. I mean, I'm, well, 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 hang on. So, so like on well, paper, yeah, like, I, I, on the well, surface, it right, sounds good. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so, so on the surface, it's like, oh my gosh, if someone says they're going to kill tons of people, um, yeah, let's call the cops and tell them, and they'll take their weapons. But in reality, if uh, you know a husband and wife has a different disagreement, and he says. Um, you know, I, I don't appreciate you staying out all night at the dr- uh, drunk at the bar with your friends. Um, you know, you should be a better mother. The guy's not good. I mean, you know, that, that could be nuanced. But he's like, I'm going to leave and go. Uh, I'm going to leave and go out with some friends for a while. Well, the woman could call and be like, he's threatening violence for absolutely yeah. no reason whatsoever. And then they show up and yeah. take the gun. So things like that. Right. Like so in theory. Yeah. Great. The world's great. In reality. No, it means anyone. Like if I have a dispute with my neighbor or we're planting a tree too close to his house, he could call and be like, hey, um, you know, dude says violence. Uh, come get his guns. Um, you know, if I had guns or something. And so, uh, yeah, like I, I really think the, the best, which is not the best because people will die. But really, like, I, I mean, the, the old West. Right. It's like no one did background checks. It's like everyone had guns. So it's like if you had a gun and you couldn't be responsible with that gun. If you tried to rob a stagecoach, rob a bank, um, I don't know, had the mid had the Midwest, had the old West equivalent of a psychotic episode, you're going <laughs> to be dealt with fast and furiously. And then yeah. that's one less crazy person who shouldn't have a gun, no longer has a gun. You um, know, while you were so, saying this, I was like, I was like, you know, I, I think I agree. Like it's either everyone has them, like you're saying, or nobody has them. Right. Because just people can't be trusted. You know, there are just certain people that just can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? So if you're if there's going to be someone like that with a gun in their hands, then you better have one in yours. You know, <laughs> well, and the, I personally, the think, sorry, I personally think that every effort that's made to try to stop something from happening, that is you legislate your way out of having a crime happen is a very good way to restrict people's freedoms. That's what happens. I would much rather you make a law and then punish the person who breaks it. Because when you do that, it serves as a very good deterrent to those who who might break the law in the future. But when you try to preempt the breaking of a law by setting up some legal legal stoppage of something like that, you're just going to create problems. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I think. You know what? The ironic thing about this whole thing is you'll see the left will start hand wringing and oh my god, you know, blah blah blah, all this like we gotta stop the guns. But they don't wanna stop the they don't wanna do anything about the border where, you know, we have basically an open border where any amount of drugs and, and guns and everything can come in. You know, you, you can't complain about the drug problem and the fentanyl and all this stuff and then also say, Well, we're just not gonna not gonna do anything to physically block people from just entering the country. It seems you can't have it both ways, and this is what happens when, you know. Well, the reason things are that way is because 
the people that are in power, okay, you have people, you have the people that want to protect the nation and keep us a sovereign nation, and then you have the other people that want us to join the new world stage and, and be along with everybody else and forget our own sovereignty and all that. And uh, so you have those two strong ideas and opinions and going back and forth, you know. But honestly, at the end of the day, these people are all friends and, and all friends, that you, you know, outside of the office. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. No, I, 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 I know. What you mean. <laughs> it's all, it's, yeah. Two well, sides one thing's bad corn or whatever. Well, one thing's for sure. I wanted to, I, I wanted to jokingly say, this is definitely getting taken down on YouTube. The second thing I wanted to say, <laughs> the, the second thing I wanted to say is this is the most tame, level-headed discussion from all sides about this issue. So if YouTube takes this video down, they are truly evil and, um, Absolutely. you know, have, have like less than a moral compass than we even already thought they did. The bar is pretty low, but it'll still be available on Rumble. <laughs> God so, bless him. Go Rumble. What did, yeah. what did uh, this shooter, the one in Buffalo, what kind of gun was he using? Do you guys know? Um, I, I, or... No, I, I think someone said AK, but who knows? Uh, that's just I think that's just what someone said. I don't know what it actually was or not. Well, um, you, you, you know, know, because so, every gun, to, so, to some people, every gun's an AK. Every gun's a machine gun. Right, everything is, well, a, is an assault rifle if it, yeah. because if the name says AR in it, so that means... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't That's know right. actually what well, kind of was. And people, hold on one second, people, this is the this is the biggest pet peeve ever, because people have been saying, we got to ban assault rifles, blah, 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 and, and we already did that in, like, I think it was 86 or 7, actual assault rifles that, you know, a, a machine gun and a fully automatic guns are, are banned in most cases... Except under special permits, you can't go buy a fully automatic um, AK. You, you just can't. It's just impossible. You, you everything is semi-automatic, so it's just a rifle that you have to pull as many times as possible. Yeah, they can be uh, modified and stuff, but there, there's not assault rifles that you're buy, that you could just go buy it. The guns, the gun, uh, like a gun yeah. show or something. So yeah, so I, yeah, for the record, you know, I think you said a special permit, but yeah, there's like some, like class three, it's what it's called, like class three states, yeah, but which they allow, keep, they keep passing, which allow they keep saying this stuff that they that they keep saying we got to do something about these assault rifles, but you already did. Oh, I know, I know, it's it's ridiculous. Well, I mean, there's actually all the there's actually all the gun control you'd ever need. It's on the law. It's already a law. They just won't enforce the law, and then they want more laws, but they're not. Right. I don't. I, I don't know what other law you could possibly make. It's a, it's illegal but, to, to kill people. Yeah, yeah. People I mean, still if, do. If someone, it. So what? Yeah. So I mean, I, I know like Colorado, I think Louisiana, maybe Florida, like some other states. They're like class three states. So you know, if you if you pay like an exorbitant amount, like fifteen grand, and like sign over your life to the ATF. Um, yeah, and, and 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 get like these special class three permits. Then there are some cases, some states that you can have an actual legitimate machine gun. But I mean, that's nobody that we're ever talking about. Right, and they're not like rolling off the you know the yeah, shelves yeah. or something. <laughs> some they're not being produced or anything. Stupid. Well, this was fun. <laughs> I mean, it's sad, but like, what are you gonna do? We it's a country of three hundred something million people, so it's it's gonna be, you know. And then I was telling my wife, I was like, you know what? They're making a huge deal about this on CBS, the morning show today. And I get it; it's you know, ten people shot or murdered, or it's it's awful. But next weekend, if there's five or ten murders in Chicago, you know, they won't, they won't say anything. It's not a big deal, right? And you can really. Chicago in t in 2021, Chicago had over 500 murders in, for the year. <laughs> and, and, and so you what, can really tell that yeah, outrage. And, and you can exactly, and you can really tell the agenda because there's some things that's just you just can't deny, or you you can't say certain things and leave out huge pieces without just like throwing your bias for all to see. So it's like you know when when the first thing people talk about is you know someone's race, religion, or creed, or whatever, and say, and they single out this group of crazies, 
and they disregard all the other groups based on race, religion, creed, whatever, um, and they disregard all of that crazy, it's like, you're so biased, I honestly cannot have a discussion with you. I just can't. Either we talk about all the crazy people who shoot people for any reason. The reason doesn't matter. Shooting people matters. So, like, anyone that gets shot because of some nut job, it doesn't matter their race, religion, or creed. That is a bad person. So if we can't talk about all of those bad people, then I don't want to talk to the person that wants to talk about one group of those people. Yeah, and I mean, are the people that are against all this, you know, the, the mass shootings, do we have different um, sentencing for, you know, like if you shoot one person, is it going to be different? I don't, I don't know, like, it's just... Yeah, and we were talking earlier. Like, I think I think mass shooting. Like, I, I believe it's the it's FBI's four. definite. The, yeah, it's like four or more, and that's a mass shooting. So they were talking about like, well, how does that compare to the rest of the world? I'm like, well, does the uh, the rest of the world, other countries, define mass shootings the same way we do? Like, you know, let's get our T's crossed and I's dotted, yeah. and then talk about actual examples. Like, someone said, like Norway um, was per capita the most the most mass shootings in the world. Really. Yeah, some, I think it was Xbox earlier. Someone pulled up some stats, and it was, like, per capita. And, like, the biggest mass shooting ever was either in, like, um, New Zealand or Norway, one, one of those two. But, yeah, I'm like, you know, so so we have a lot that include four or more and fit the definition of it. Um, well, yeah, we got interestingly a lot of enough, people in this country. <laughs> I mean, interestingly enough that a lot of those also are in heavily regulated gun control places. Um, you don't see, not that there aren't any, but you typically don't see a lot of mass shootings in, you know, um, Texas or, or Florida, which, you know, like mo they happen at schools, which, you know, in Texas and Florida are the heaviest regulated gun control places like, you know, government buildings and schools and stuff like that. So you I'm, know, uh, I'm, I'm here. I, I live in South Florida. And, you know, uh, a couple months back, some dude went into the Publix, which is like uh, our Kroger. Um, or stop and shop, whatever, and came in and he shot a few people, went up to a baby, shot the baby, shot the mother, right down the block from my house. The the Publix has been closed for like five months, it's about to reopen this week. Mm. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it happens, man. I don't know if it's, if anyone, if anyone has heard of that one that happened, that's why I'm saying it. Like, this happened locally, and we know about it locally, but I don't know if anybody outside of Florida or knows about it or whatever. Wow, yeah, we I had a big about one. it. Like, what's, we had, like, you don't, need to, here. you don't need to give me your address, but, like, what, what is South oh, Florida? Yeah, like, uh, it, what, it happened in Royal Palm Beach. It happened in Royal Palm Beach. Um, I lived in wow, Royal Palm Beach. Wow, how long ago was it? Uh, maybe about six months ago. I mean, it couldn't be more than six months ago. It happened at the like Royal – yeah, look it up, uh, shooting Royal Palm Beach – Publix. If you look that wow. up, it should pop right up. Yeah. Very sad, man. Very sad. And the crazy thing was is that the people who were talking about this guy after, you know, I believe they were just like, well, you know, we never thought that he would do something like that. You know, and we have to, as Christians, we have to be aware. Okay, okay because, you know, we believe in the supernatural, right? And if what we believe is the truth, okay, which we believe it is, then we should know, okay, that the demonic is a real thing. Honestly, I think the only thing that could stop things like this is the gospel. You know, um, I think it's the most effective tool. Now, you guys probably won't agree with me because I'm in the minority with my view, but I'm a post-millennialist. So I believe that as you know as the world progresses that the world gets gets better as we go because i mean like if you if you take step back and take a look at time at time as a whole right would you rather live today or 200 years ago that may be the best argument i've heard for it yeah i would rather live you, you know you know today. what i mean there there so you know, I used to be. I was a. I was a pre. -mil, I was a um, a pre for for a long time, um, and uh, I found that the post millennial view of eschatology only works if the gospel is central. 
And well, but that view would also only work work if things continue to progressively get better. So like in 50 years from now, uh, you know, if they're doing mass exterminations or whatever, and you know, humanity is sick and plagued and dying and there's no food and you know, then they'd be like, would you rather live right now or 500 <laughs> years ago? Be like no, 500 no. years ago. So things would have to well, progressively you know, get better. Yeah, you know, and, and, that, and that's it. And that's what I mean, like progressively. Um, because, you know, there's sometimes where, where, you know, the kingdom will, will take, you know, five, five leaps forward and we get set back to, you know, set back two leaves. And then it goes like, so if you look through time, right, like over the past 2000 years of, you know, what Christianity has, has, you know, brought upon the world. You know, I believe um, there's probably some non-Christians in here that <laughs> might not may, may totally disagree with me. But I believe, you know, when Jesus came, he brought the kingdom and that kingdom was a mustard seed. And that that mustard seed grew and grew and grew, just like in, uh, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream about the rock that is not that is not honed from human hands and thrown at the statue. And then all of a sudden that rock just grows and fills the whole earth every time you hear about the gospel i mean every time you hear about the kingdom it's always something compared to something that was small that grows really big over a large period of time and if you look at how christianity spread and yes there have been times where we were larger you know or you know where we were larger and then like got small shrunk but then grew out big again and it's actually very, very interesting if you look um, on a map how Christianity grew, how it's seismic, how it grew, shrank, grew larger and shrank like over, over the years. Um, I would say check out, it's called Honor As It Is In Heaven. And it's a documentary and it has all this stuff in it um, about that. And also uh, post-millennialism, I... I Sorry, I just switched the subject to post-millennialism. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, so basically, um, yeah, man, I, I honestly think that the world, even though, see, see, sin doesn't get better, right? Sin never gets better. Uh, people's depravity don't get better. But when they accept Christ and the Holy Spirit changes you, right? changes you from the way you were and then changes you into the image of Christ. Well, as each person that comes into the kingdom every day gets transformed, well, the world gets better through them. You know what I mean? Um, for example, look at all the children's hospitals. You know, they're all, they're all Christian. Most of them are all Christian and you have all the adoption agencies. You know, when was, I mean, is there a Muslim adoption agency anywhere? I've never heard of it. And I'm not making a, a slight mark towards uh, Islam, but I'm just using an example. Or when was the last, what was the last atheist orphanage or atheist hospital? Or, you know, you know what I mean? Well, the problem is, Nick, so although we look, a, there's not many atheists. Also, uh, I know, I, I, hang on, let me ask you, what about the employees that work at these establishments? Yeah. Is what it possible? Them? Is it possible that the employees that work there are not believers and they're doing it out, out of their uh, wanting to help others, regardless of who started this this uh, you know orphanage or hospital? And there are other hospitals out there that are not religiously based. A lot of the sure, county sure, hospitals, sure, a, lot sure. of, a lot of the county hospitals, which are the level one trauma center in the area provide the utmost critical care for those in traumatic situations. So sure, I'm not denying yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not denying yeah, that at all. One of the biggest yeah. ones here in Colorado yeah. uh, is, a, is just is education-based. It's not a... It's, yeah, so... Yeah, no, well, yes, wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. I hate to get you guys short, but I do have to jet. But uh, in recap, uh, James, you probably were named after uh, St. James Hospital. Just kidding. No, I, know that. I, 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 like how you, I like how you do I, that, Nate. I, Why do you stir the pot? Why do you got to do that? How is Nate, that Nate. bad? Why can't you just be, well, if I said that to Mo, he'd be like, ha ha, no, and we'd move on. Like, there's there's Nate, no what, ill what will here. I, Anyways, hang on, Darren, to respond to your, what, to, to respond, hang on a second. To respond to Darren, to recap, yes, you are in the minority about postmillennialism. I am not that. Um, I think a way to vet your claim is, you know, if things progressively get worse and, you know, 
20, 30, 50 years, if uh, things are progressively still getting better, uh, continue to make that case. Um, if we're all in, you know, enslavement camps by alien overlords, uh, probably not true. Um, you know, I do believe things will, will progressively get worse and worse until Jesus says, look to the eastern sky and the end will come. Um, and as far as why I'm leaving, yeah, we've had an awesome discussion. I wish you guys would have showed up earlier. But, um, yeah, it, Just make it was a – it, it was a, it, odds. <laughs> Why do you guys throw the pot like that? Just kidding. Um, no, hey, also, just kidding, with, James. What's the deal with – why did Steph have some other room about some drama? What's going on? I'm going to speak to that in just a second, which I really okay. don't know, but I'm going to – okay, anyways. So the last thing I'd say is we had a lot of discussion about the recent shootings and gun laws and gun controls and would Jesus own a gun, things like that. So if you happen to listen to the replay and want to say something, um, you know, save it and we'll pick it back up tomorrow if you want. Um, anyways, glad you're here, James. Wish you would have hopped in earlier. Um, with that in mind, yeah, I have to leave soon, like actually leave. Uh, but in the few minutes I have left, I want to jump into Steph's room because apparently some Christian scandal has befallen us all. And I want to go be nosy and see what it's about. So um, if you'd like to join me over there, please do so. And uh, if you want to watch this replay on YouTube, uh, good chance it's going to get taken down. So uh, you can use Rumble slash rumble.com slash ask a Christian as a backup. Um, so um, uh -huh. anyone have, want to have like a 20 second final thought? Nick, yeah, Nicholas, I just, Nicholas, I think you thought I was a Christian. I'm an atheist, but I, I'm still being cordial and. 20 seconds, okay. Nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, I just want to say God bless everybody in here, my Christian brothers and my non-Christian brothers. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this conversation. I'll definitely be back. God bless you guys. Good, Thanks, talk to, Nick. good to hear you talk. Walter, 20 seconds. That's it. Everybody be good. James, 20 be seconds. Nice. What do you call somebody who, who – what's the label? Not that I like labels. I've heard someone say they're not a Christian. However, they hold everything in the Bible to be true. They believe in Jesus Christ. What Other than a theist, what form of religion would they – fall under uh wait so someone that effectively is a christian they just don't like calling themselves that label right that's my understanding so someone who believes in jesus christ and believes everything in the bible is true does that make fall them in christianity I, I mean unless there's some nuance i'm not aware of but if they if they believe exactly like a christian but don't like the label christian because it has negative connotations from societal pressures they typically call themselves like jesus believer or disciple of christ Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, if, if their views align with Christian, they're like, okay, great. You call yourself that, and with my understanding of what you said, I'm going to know you're a Christian. Gotcha. Um, but if they're like, Jesus is cool, he's a prophet, we're all going to fly away in a spaceship, I'm like, okay, don't call yourself Christian. Uh, Darren, <laughs> final thoughts, Darren? 20 seconds? Darren, three, two, one. All right, man, thanks, everyone. This was a good conversation. I liked it. We got away from quite so much religious bickering today. I'm sure we'll be back tomorrow, but uh, take care, everyone. Peace. Yeah, you too, brother.